Hey, I'm Vinny, this is Makeify. I just made this fish skull model that demonstrates how fish open their jaws. And I added a motor. Now I'm gonna show you how I made it. Before we move on, I just wanna point out that this isn't based on any one particular species of fish. It's kind of modeled after an early prototypical teleos just to demonstrate the major components involved in jaw opening. In real life, things are actually more complicated than this, but at least with my skill level, it's hard to demonstrate that using two-dimensional wood. There's also a ton of variation in nature in terms of how different species open and close their jaws. This shows the major components though. Now back to the build. The pieces of the skull were cut out from a sheet of one quarter inch plywood that I salvaged from a dumpster. I designed all the parts on the computer and printed out a template. You can download this template for free, link below. I used spray adhesive to stick the template to the plywood. Then cut the pieces out on my bandsaw. I used a quarter inch 14 TPI blade because the plywood is so thin. Alternatively, you could use a scroll saw or you could cut the pieces out by hand with a coping saw. I used a 964 inch drill bit to drill through holes at the filled circles on the template. I used a quarter inch brad point bit to drill holes partially through the open circles on the back side of the pieces. These holes don't go all the way through the wood and their bottoms are flat. I used a one inch Forstner bit to drill out most of the orbit. Then used a small sanding drum to finish the shape. I removed the template from the pieces. And sanded all the pieces nice and smooth. Here are the final pieces of the model. The largest piece represents the neural cranium, which encloses the brain, plus the sesamosorium and the hyomandibula. There are actually many bones that make up this part, but most are tightly joined and immobile, so I simplified them into a single piece. The upper jaw is actually two bones, the maxilla and premaxilla. In some fish, the premaxilla can extend out from the maxilla, but in this model, they're a single piece. The lower jaw is composed of the dentary and angular articular bones. The upper and lower jaws are connected via the maxillomandibular ligament. Then there's the hyoid, which is composed of a bunch of little bones. It's connected to the lower jaw via the genial hyoideus muscle. The long piece on the back is the pectoral girdle, which technically isn't part of the skull, but it's important in jaw opening. It's composed of several bones, and it's also the attachment point for the pectoral fins. The pectoral girdle is connected to the hyoid via the sternial hyoideus muscle. To connect all these pieces, I got some 632 threaded rod and some nylon insert lock nuts. I cut the threaded rod into 10 pieces with a cutting wheel. Nine were cut to a length of a half inch and one was cut to three quarters of an inch. I mixed up some quick setting epoxy and epoxied the threaded rods into the shallow holes. The three quarter inch rod went into the hole where the hyomandibula meets the hyoid. I stained the ligament and the muscles to differentiate them from the bony components. and I let them dry. I used masking tape to mark off a spot on the back side of the pectoral girdle and finished the wood with spray lacquer. When that was dry, I connected all the pieces. And secured them with lock nuts.
Okay, so this is how the jaw opens. The paxial muscles, which are on the top or dorsal side of the fish, contract and lift the neurocranium. Simultaneously, the hypaxial muscles, which are on the bottom or ventral side of the fish, along with the sternohyoideus and geniohyoideus muscles, contract and cause depression of the hyoid and downward rotation of the lower jaw. As the lower jaw rotates down, the upper jaw swings out because it's connected to the lower jaw via the maxillomandibular ligament. The jaws close via a different complex muscular mechanism that's not shown here. This model is just meant to illustrate jaw opening. I could have stopped there, but I wanted to attach a motor to make this thing move on its own. To do that, I got a micro servo motor and modified it. I opened the servo up, and I didn't care about the electronics inside, so to remove those, I needed to desolder three points on the circuit board and the two wires on the motor. Then I soldered two new longer wires onto the motor. Then popped open the top and remove the top gear. There are two plastic tabs on this gear that prevent it from rotating a full 360 degrees. I cut those off with a knife. The hole in this gear is notched, but I wanted it to spin freely. So I used a small drill bit to make it completely circular. Then I put the gear back in place and put the covers back on the servo. This servo came with three different arms and I picked the smallest one and drilled a quarter inch hole in it. This was six millimeters from the center. I epoxied another half inch piece of threaded rod into this hole. I cut a coupling piece out of the quarter inch plywood and drilled nine 64 inch holes through it. I cut a base plate from the quarter inch plywood to mount the model onto. This plate was 10 and a half by eight inches. I marked the spot where I wanted the servo to go and drilled out most of the hole with a drill bit and finished it up with a sanding drum and some files. I marked the mounting holes and drilled holes at these spots. I got a small switch and marked a spot for it on the base plate then drilled and filed this hole out. I got some scrap oak and cut a small support block. It was a half inch by a half inch by three quarter inches tall. I marked where it needed to be on the base plate and drilled two pilot holes into the base plate and two into the support block. I set the block onto some masking tape and masked off the end opposite the pilot holes. The base plate, the coupler piece, and the support block were then painted with matte black spray paint. When that was dry, I removed the masking tape from the support block and glued it onto the back of the pectoral girdle. To make a frame for everything, I got a piece of oak from a home improvement store. It was two and a half by three quarter inches. I cut four mitered pieces two were nine inches long on the outside 
and two were 11 and a half inches long on the outside. I used my homemade router table and a half inch straight bit to route out a quarter inch rabbit on the inside of the four frame pieces. I took several passes to get this rabbit to a depth of one inch. Then I glued the frame together. clamped it, and let it dry. I cut eight triangles out of some scrap quarter inch oak to serve as splines in the frame. I used a handsaw, a chisel, and some files to cut slots for these splines. I cut two slots in each corner. Then I glued the triangular splines into the slots. and let them dry. I cut off the excess with a flush cut handsaw. I used a keyhole bit in a Dremel rotary tool and a homemade router base I made for it to cut a keyhole in the top of the back of the frame. This will allow me to hang the frame on a screw. Then I sanded the frame down to 220 grit. and finished it with spray lacquer. I inserted the base plate into the frame and secured it with four small nails. I installed the servo with the two screws that came with it. I got a little switch and a two AA battery holder and epoxied them to the back of the base plate. Then I soldered the wires together. One wire from the battery went to the switch, one wire from the servo went to the switch, and the remaining wire from the battery was connected to the remaining wire from the servo. Then I added the coupler pieces to the model. I used a couple of spacer washers and a couple of lock nuts, and connected it to the servo arm. Then I connected the servo arm to the servo, I positioned everything just right, which is quite tricky because it has to be perfect. Then screwed the support block onto the base plate with two number four wood screws. Later I actually added epoxy to this joint to make it stronger. And then the model was complete. I'm thrilled with how this thing turned out. I mean, that's so cool. Anyway, if you don't want to go through the hassle of making the frame and adding the motor and all of that, you can still make this model. You can download the template I made for free, link down below, and cut out the pieces out of cardboard or foam board, which is what I did for prototyping. And then you can use uh, toothpicks at the joints, and you can make a little functional model that isn't too hard to make. So I made this as my submission to the Makers Care annual fundraiser for Make-A-Wish Foundation. You can learn more at makerscare.org. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to keep up to date with my newest videos or check out my other channel, Makeify 2. Thanks for watching. Hey, I'm, ooh, that was loud. And I just made this fish skull model that shows, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, ton of variation and, <laughs> ton of variation in terms of, oh, that was close, that was close. Uh, but in nature, there's a ton of variation in how fish open their, this is the hardest thing to do, film. It's kind of modeled after an early prototypical teleost, but <clears throat> early prototypical teleost. And it just, <clears throat> this just shows the major components though. Now back to the video. Oh no. Okay, now back to the build. <clears throat> My voice just squeaked. Print out the template and you can make, cut it out. Oh. That's never gonna get old.